Is that ready? Okay, right, so digestive enzymes and digestion. Now, I've drawn this out and I would advise a lot of you to, 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 to try it, to try to draw the digestive system because it actually makes you realise what's going on and where everything is, okay? So to start on that one, let's label a few things, okay? The mouth is where I am trying to, to draw here, but in the mouth, I need us to be aware that there is a, a place or a gland called the salivary gland. Now, glands make secretions, and a lot of the time these are going to be enzymes, and that's what the most of this is going to be about. The digestive system and the enzymes that are in it. Okay? This is the oesophagus. Be careful of the spelling. Okay? Otherwise known as the gullet, what you used to get before, but now we're calling it the oesophagus. This large structure here is the liver. And this little bump that comes off the liver is called the gallbladder. This large object is our stomach. This is a bad drawing of a pancreas. R E A S. And then we come to the intestines which we have the, the large intestine and on the other side, and it's thinner, so we call this the small intestine. I've done those in the wrong order. Intestine, which I shouldn't have done really because the order, the sequence of the digestive system is mouth to esophagus, this is where your food will travel, the gut is just one long tube. The aim of digestion is to break large insoluble molecules into small solid molecules. It could be a one mark question. So, from the mouth, down the esophagus, into the stomach, along this tube to become the small intestine, which is all raveled up to create a large surface area, which then becomes the large intestine. And if I go through the basics individual, basic roles. The mouth is where digestion begins to occur. The esophagus is where there is a squeezing motion which pushes the food down into the stomach, which is where digestion continues to occur. Then these two produce chemicals, which we'll talk about in a bit, which help with digestion. And then when we reach the small intestine, the food is small enough to be absorbed into the bloodstream. And that's the key to what we're doing. We're trying to make our food small enough to be absorbed into the bloodstream. I could even draw large capillaries all around here showing that that's where the food is absorbed. Okay. The remaining leftover uh, waste material then enters our large intestine where all the water is removed to become faeces, which comes out of the anus rectum. Okay, now what I really need to show you where the real problems come is these enzymes. All right, now try to put this on the board. There are three main enzymes you need to be aware of, and maybe you'll have to take notes on this as we're going along. But amylase breaks down carbohydrates into smaller sugars and eventually glucose. Protease breaks down proteins into amino acids. Lipase breaks down lipids, which we used to call fats, but now we're going to call them lipids, into fatty acids and glycerol. You just must know that, okay? But I have given each one a colour, and on the diagram I have tried to represent where you find each enzyme, where it's produced and where it does its role, alright? And this is a classic exam question. So, in the mouth, you only find amylase. Amylase is made by the salivary gland and it begins to break down the carbohydrates. There are no enzymes in the esophagus. There is just a squeezing motion which breaks down the food. In the stomach, we only have protease. So only proteins are being broken down in the stomach. Right now, we're not breaking down any of our fats. I hope you can see that. Then we come to here, and we get the addition of 
two different sets of chemicals. There are three enzymes made by the pancreas. I hope you can see that all of the three main types of enzymes are made in the pancreas. So our lipid digestion begins about here. And the same three enzymes are made in the small intestine. So, by the time we have reached towards the end of the small intestine, amylase has turned carbohydrates into glucose to be absorbed. Protease has turned proteins into amino acids to be absorbed. And lipase has become, has turned lipids into fatty acids and glycerol to be absorbed. Now, one more bit I need to tell you about. There are two more chemicals that you need to know about, but they're not enzymes, hence why I've left them till the end. In the stomach, there is hydrochloric acid. Two functions. The first function of hydrochloric acid is to, one, kill bacteria due to its pH and the second is to create the optimum pH for protease. Protease likes to work in acidic conditions that's why hydrochloric acid is in the stomach and then we have a chemical that is made in the liver stored in the gallbladder and then released into the small intestine a chemical called bile and bile does two jobs again it neutralizes the stomach acid and secondly it emulsifies I was going to put fats there but I must put lipids now, emulsification is a big word, but it just means taking large globules of fat and making small globules of fat so the enzyme can work better. Okay? So, the digestive system, done.